Colt 2000, $500. The Colt 2000 was a semi-auto pistol manufactured by Colt's manufacturing company in the late 20th century. It was introduced in 1991 and was intended to be a revolutionary design, incorporating several innovative features. However, it was not well received and is often considered one of the worst guns ever made. One of the main reasons for the negative reputation of the Colt 2000 was its unreliable performance. Many users reported frequent malfunctions and failures to feed, extract, and eject rounds. These reliability issues were attributed to the complex and unproven design of the pistol. The firearm had a rotating barrel locking mechanism, which was intended to reduce recoil and increase accuracy, but ended up causing more problems than it solved. The ergonomics of the Colt 2000 were also criticized. The grip design and angle were considered uncomfortable by many shooters, leading to poor control and accuracy. The trigger pull was heavy and inconsistent, further affecting the pistol's shootability and user experience. Another factor that contributed to the poor reputation of the Colt 2000 was its limited market success. The pistol failed to gain widespread acceptance and popularity among law enforcement agencies, military units, or civilian shooters. It was quickly overshadowed by more reliable and established competitors in the firearms market. Due to its numerous design flaws, the Colt 2000 was eventually discontinued in 1993, just a few years after its introduction. The pistol's short production lifespan and negative reputation have solidified its place among the least desirable firearms ever made. Shoshat $3,500 The Shoshat mash gun, officially known as the Fusil Mitrailleur Model 1915 CSRG, was a light mash gun that saw extensive use by French and American forces during World War I. While it had its shortcomings, it is important to note that labeling it as the worst gun ever made is subjective, and there were other factors that influenced its performance. Let's delve into the details of the Shoshat. The Shoshat was designed in the early 20th century by Colonel Louis Shoshat and Charles Sutter. It was intended to provide automatic firepower to infantry squads. Chambered for the 8mm Lebel rifle cartridge, it featured a long recoil action and an open bolt firing mechanism. One of the major problems with the Shoshat, one of the major problems with the Shoshat was its unreliable and sensitive open bolt firing mechanism. The gun was prone to jamming, especially when exposed to dirt, mud, or debris on the battlefield. Its open-sided mag design also made it susceptible to clogging, further exacerbating its reliability issues. Additionally, the Shoshat's manufacturing quality varied significantly, leading to inconsistencies in performance and reliability between different units. Its heavy weight and awkward design made it difficult to maneuver and carry in combat. Despite its flaws, the Shoshat was widely used by French and American forces due to a shortage of other mash guns during World War I. It remained in service in various forms for several years after the war, but its reputation as a reliable and effective mash gun suffered. Type 94 Nambu $1,000 There have been several examples of poorly designed firearms throughout history, but one that stands out as particularly notorious is the Type 94 Nambu pistol, which was produced from 1935 to 1945. Despite its significant flaws, it was widely used by the Imperial Japanese Army during World War II. So what exactly makes the Nambu Type 94 one of the worst handguns in history? The Type 94 Nambu was a semi-auto pistol developed by retired Army veteran Kijiro Nambu and his associates. It was intended to be a compact, lightweight, and effective firearm, but unfortunately, it fell short on most accounts. While the pistol was indeed small in size, it proved to be highly ineffective and even dangerous for its users. One of the major issues with the Type 94 Nambu was its problem with unintentional firing. The sear bar, a crucial component responsible for holding the hammer in place, was mounted on the outside of the pistol. This design flaw made it susceptible to accidental activation if the pistol was mishandled or dropped. This made it an inherently unsafe firearm to use, posing a serious risk to the user and those around them. Additionally, the Type 94 Nambu suffered from numerous mechanical problems. It was prone to jamming, frequently experienced mag malfunctions, and even had instances where it broke apart during disassembly. These reliability issues compromised the pistol's functionality and made it highly unreliable in combat situations. The pistol's internal components were also delicate and prone to breakage, 
especially during disassembly for cleaning and maintenance. This fragility made it all too easy for users to inadvertently damage the gun's components, further exacerbating its reliability problems. Reassembling the pistol after disassembly was a complicated and time-consuming process, particularly in field conditions where quick and efficient maintenance was crucial. Magnum Caliber Handguns $900 Magnum Caliber Handguns are a category of firearms that are chambered for powerful and high-velocity cartridges, commonly known as Magnum Rounds. While it is subjective to label any specific Magnum Caliber handgun as the worst gun ever made, there are certain considerations to be made when discussing these firearms. One of the main factors to consider with Magnum Caliber handguns is their recoil. Due to the higher muzzle energy generated by Magnum rounds, these handguns can produce significant recoil. This recoil can make them more challenging to handle and shoot accurately, particularly for inexperienced shooters or those with weaker grips. The strong recoil can also lead to discomfort or even pain during extended shooting sessions. Another factor to keep in mind is the difficulty of follow-up shots. The recoil and muzzle rise of Magnum caliber handguns can impact the shooter's ability to quickly and accurately fire subsequent rounds. It often takes more time to regain control and realign the sights after each shot, potentially affecting the shooter's ability to deliver fast and accurate follow-up shots. Ammunition availability and cost are also considerations with Magnum caliber handguns. These firearms typically require specialized ammunition, which may be less commonly found and more expensive compared to standard handgun cartridges. This can result in limited availability and higher costs for ammunition, making regular practice and training sessions with Magnum caliber handguns more expensive. Another potential concern with Magnum caliber handguns is over-penetration. The high muzzle energy of Magnum rounds can result in increased penetration through barriers, potentially posing a risk of unintended damage or injury in self-defense situations where bystanders may be present. Gewehr 41, $3,950 During World War II, Germany initially relied on the bolt-action Carabiner 98K as their standard infantry rifle. However, as the war progressed, German engineers sought ways to enhance the individual soldier's rate of fire. As a result, they developed the Gewehr 41 rifle. The Gewehr 41 introduced an early gas piston, rotating bolt rifle operating system, which was somewhat similar to the one later used in the renowned M1 Garand rifle. However, the implementation of this system in the G41 fell short compared to the Garand. The G41 was expensive to manufacture and required intricate machining processes, making it a complex and time-consuming firearm to produce. One of the significant drawbacks of the G41 was its demanding maintenance requirements. The weapon had to be meticulously maintained to ensure proper functioning, and its muzzle had a tendency to foul, requiring frequent cleaning during use. This maintenance demand posed challenges for soldiers in the field, where time and resources were often limited. Another drawback of the G41 was its weight and poor balance. Weighing in at 11 pounds when unloaded, it was over 2 pounds heavier than the Carabiner 98K. The additional weight made it more cumbersome for soldiers to carry and handle, particularly during extended periods of combat. The poor balance of the weapon further exacerbated this issue, affecting its maneuverability and overall ergonomics. Although the G41 was a semi-auto weapon, its integral non-detachable mag presented limitations. Loading the mag was a slow process, impacting the rate of fire. Reloading required the use of stripper clips, which were not as efficient as detachable box mags commonly found in other rifles of the time. This hindered the rifle's ability to sustain a rapid and continuous rate of fire during engagements. Colt 1855 Revolving Rifle $3,500 the Colt 1855 revolving rifle was a firearm produced by Colt's manufacturing company in the mid-19th century, and it is often considered one of the more problematic firearms in history. One of the major drawbacks of the Colt 1855 was its reliability issues. The rifle featured a revolving cylinder that held multiple chambers, similar to Colt's popular revolvers of the time. However, the design of the cylinder and the sealing mechanism proved to be problematic. The rifle often suffered from gas leakage between the cylinder and the barrel, resulting in reduced accuracy and potential safety concerns. The gas leakage could also lead to fouling and increased maintenance requirements. Additionally, 
The Colt 1855 revolving rifle had a complex and intricate mechanism, which made it prone to mechanical failures and malfunctions. The rifle's internal components were intricate and delicate, making it susceptible to damage or breakage during use or maintenance. This complexity also meant that the rifle required meticulous cleaning and maintenance to keep it in proper working condition. Another significant drawback of the gun was its limited ammunition capacity. Despite the revolving cylinder design, the rifle had a relatively low cartridge capacity compared to other contemporary firearms of the time. Reloading the rifle was a slow and cumbersome process as each individual chamber had to be loaded separately, unlike the quick reloading capabilities of other rifles that used mags or breech loading systems. This limited ammunition capacity and slow reloading time put the shooter at a disadvantage in combat situations. Furthermore, the gun had significant weight and balance issues. The rifle was heavy and unwieldy, making it difficult to carry and maneuver, particularly in prolonged engagements. Its poor balance further compounded these issues, impacting the shooter's ability to aim and handle the firearm effectively. Jennings J-22 Pistol $150 The Jennings J-22 Pistol, also known as the Jennings Bryco Model 38, is a small semi-auto pistol chambered in 22 LR caliber. Produced by Jennings Firearms and later Bryco Arms, it gained a reputation as one of the firearms with significant drawbacks and is often considered as one of the worst guns ever made. One of the main criticisms of the Jennings J-22 pistol is its poor build quality and reliability issues. The materials used in its construction were of low quality and the overall craftsmanship left much to be desired. This resulted in a firearm that was prone to malfunctions and failures, leading to frequent jams, misfires, and feeding problems. These reliability issues compromised the functionality of the pistol and made it a less than dependable choice for self-defense or other purposes. Another significant concern with the Jennings J-22 is its subpar accuracy. The pistol's short barrel length, combined with its rudimentary sights and inconsistent manufacturing tolerances, made it difficult to achieve consistent and precise shot placement. This limited accuracy greatly reduced its effectiveness for accurate target shooting or self-defense scenarios that require precise aiming. The Jennings J-22 pistol also faced criticism for its safety features, or rather lack thereof. It had a rudimentary manual thumb safety, but its design and positioning made it difficult to engage or disengage reliably. This raised concerns about accidental discharges and compromised the overall safety of the firearm. Furthermore, the ergonomics and user comfort of the gun were often cited as significant drawbacks.